Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the patrons. Make sure to subscribe guys. We are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers until the end of the year. We have 10 months to go and basically 35,000, 34,000 uh, to go. So help me out there and let's get going. So today we are going to talk a little bit about one thing that a lot of people have doubts on it. And every single update, especially in the dev blog, I see people doing uh, bug reports on the dev server, especially because an X aircraft doesn't have the power that it's supposed to have in real life or whatever uh, they want to call it because Gaijin nerfed the aircraft and because uh, it should have more power and whatever. I seen this since the MiG-19 was added, even before that. Uh, all the aircraft that are ever added, the people always complain about it. But people forget about one thing. Uh, there are multiple ways to actually deal with power or trust in the jet engine, okay? It's not as easy to just tell how much power it's producing, uh, like an, a piston engine, right? So, yeah, it's problematic. Normally, manufacturers of engines... Normally, the power that you see over here in the X-ray, for example, 68 kilonewtons or 6,820 kilograms of force, uh, normally this is measured in a, basically a... How do English speakers say this? It's like a, a, a table. I think it's called like a table or something like that. Uh, we call it bancada in Portuguese, but... Uh, yeah, they normally put it the engine there and static uh, normally and are with minimal air going into, but normally static and outside the airframe of the aircraft, which means that the power that you see there is different from the power that you see um, on many other sources. Um, my mistake there, it, it isn't the power on the X-ray, but the power that the manufacturers say. If you go, for example, to the Wikipedia page on the RD33 RD engine, for example, of the MiG-29, it will say that it has 80-something kilonewtons of power. That power that the manufacturer of the engine says that it has, it is on that static mount uh, outside the aircraft, okay? Here in the X-ray in the game, the engine is installed inside the aircraft. It loses power because of that, because it has restrictions of air due to many things, including uh, the aircraft ability to actually go very fast. If the aircraft goes very fast, it needs to have a certain design to actually be able to do that and also to control the amount of air that is going in um, to actually control uh, the flame inside the engine. If he just basically don't have that kind of line of thinking, uh, if a flame out will happen, the engine would just shut down, or something very bad will happen, like a compressor stall or anything like that. So a, a developer or, or a, a builder of an engine needs to work together with the aircraft's um, manufacturer to actually be able to build together the intakes, the exhaust, everything like that, to the engine actually work properly. Uh, for all the regimes uh, regimes that the engine needs to be properly working, it will mean that the engine will have some drags and less air than it actually uh, would have in a static mount on a manufacturer of an engine kind of situation, right? So, which means that less air is being intaken, it's being uh, ingested, and with that you have less power. Hence, why we have 68 kilonewtons here and not 80 something that the manufacturer of the Klimov engine actually says that it has. But it has another thing. If we go uh, to a flight, depending on the flight regime, uh, more air or less air will be intake ingested by the engine's intake, which means that the engine power will change. So that's why the static engine power over here is normally uh, a good way to just compare these engines uh, to to just you know have a kind of a how no variations to actually compare engines because they are static inside the engines intake. Why? 
because depending on the flight regime of any aircraft, it will change the power. So it depends. It then it depends on temperature, depends on all sorts of things that will make the engine produce more power or less power. Uh, so it is kind of too many variables, right? Uh, and adding it like this on the, the, the static kind of situation here in the hangar, it makes it so that you can actually compare them to each other a little bit easier. I will show uh, what I mean flying in a... Um, let me just delete everything on, um, on, a, on a test flight over here. So as you see, we are here. I am with the uh, War Thunder real-time information uh, up, uh, basically program, overlay program. I have videos on it. You can check it out. Uh, but as you see, right on the left side uh, over, let me, like over there, you see what I mean on power there on the left side on the bottom of the screen. It said thrust one and thrust two. I am with an idle engine, no power, so it's producing very little power. The funny part is that it produces power. So let's break the aircraft. And as you see, if I increase power, it will increase the thrust that it's producing. It's putting more fuel and it's just producing a little bit more fuel, more power. As you see, we are at 15 kilonewtons. We are producing the same, for example, at 50% over here. We are producing the same as a military power engine um, on a MiG-21, for example. So, yeah, as you see, very powerful engine. If we go to 100%, it is producing the amount that it says on the stat card. And if I even do this, it will produce basically that as well. 60 something kilonewtons each, as you see. But once we take off. Yep. See how the power still is increasing. Yeah, because the engine is ingesting more air. I'm putting more speed on the aircraft, so it has the chance of not only ingesting the normal like air that it's like ingesting with the uh, the compressors it is also um, using the movement of the aircraft to actually ingest a little bit more air and compress a little bit more air so as you see 100 kilonewtons we are already producing more than 200 kilonewtons together so as you see that number on the hangar it's nothing compared to it i'm producing twice as much power as that as you see, it is a very powerful engine, right? And that is going to happen to any aircraft that you fly. 121 kilonewtons, as you see. And yeah, 245, basically, kilonewtons of power, which is more powerful than any jet, uh, jet engine on the X-ray um, in the game. So very, very cool to actually see that. Um, as you see, the power is lowering because I am actually being faster a little bit. And uh, if I s try to go a little bit faster, it produces a little bit more power. If I go a little bit higher, it loses speed, it, lo it loses power. Of course, this will change with air temperature because of the um, density of air. It will change, obviously, because of the density of air uh, climbing as well. The l even though compressors in... Uh, piston engines and in jet engines, they do tend to help a lot uh, with the high altitude air uh, not being there, basically the density of air being a lower density in a higher altitude. It is still going to affect uh, the, the amount of air that the engine is taking, even though it feels less than a non-compressed engine, for example, in a piston engine, right? But still produce, uh, has that problem. Uh, as you see, 80 kilonewtons, I'm still at basically the same speed that I was before uh, down there, right? At 1,500 kilometers per hour, but I'm producing like 40% less power. That's because of the altitude. So there are so many variables, so many variables that uh, you cannot actually uh, measure that inside the hangar. So that's why they just put it at uh, the normal power there for the normal uh, static power inside the engine uh, and that's why you see sometimes uh, most likely every time uh, different um, power outputs from um, an air an engine that is inside the aircraft an engine that is inside the aircraft and flying and an engine that is outside the aircraft which is normally the power output that you see 
um, on, um, on, on the Wikipedia sometimes, right? Um, so yeah, pretty cool, right guys? Any aircraft will have that. If you download the overlay program that I said, I have some videos on it. As I said, you will check that every single aircraft will have this problem. And it is something that um, it makes you kind of understand how engine power work. And a little bit of the little things that change the way that air an aircraft will fly. You know, um, that will sometimes make you win a dogfight or not. Probably not going to change too much if you know how to play the game. Uh, nothing will matter in that sense. But still, it is something cool to happen. Especially for people that always complain about Gaijin actually adding the wrong power on an aircraft. And it's not because of that. And they have to answer every single time. So, yeah. It's just kind of counterproductive, right? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe, guys. Let me know in the comments if you... Uh, understood or not hopefully i was kind of clear and i see you guys on the next one so bye guys see you